All right, thank you for joining us. Welcome back to Business Today. Now, stakeholders in the manufacturing sector have today launched the Manufacturing Priority Agenda MPA 2023, which is set to act as a guide for the sector, which is now targeting to create over one million jobs in the next five years. Jimmy Mbogo was at the launch and now joins us with more. Good afternoon, Jimmy. Tell us more. Well, indeed, a very good afternoon to you, Tunya Kundi. Yes, as you rightfully said, this was the launch of the Manufacturing Priority Agenda, uh, that is MPA for 20, uh, that, that is going to basically be a guideline for the manufacturing sector. Now, one of the things that has stood out is the fact that uh, manufacturers are looking to increase their contribution to the country's GDP from the current 7% to about 20%. 20%. And also, in, in the meantime, the other target that has stood out for me is the fact that they're looking to create up to 1 million jobs. And I, I'm joined by Anthony, who's the CEO for uh, K, uh, Kenya Association of Manufacturers this afternoon, just to be able to paint a picture and to help us understand this roadmap. And given everything that has been happening from the depreciation of the shilling and also some of the taxes that we have seen and some of the complaints that the manufacturing sector ha ha has had over the, over the years, and have, this, uh, have these areas been addressed? Anthony, thank you so much for speaking to KTN. One of the things that we want to understand, first of all, it's this roadmap to, ha to a million jobs. Help us understand, how do you intend to get there? Uh, thank you, uh, and, and, and thank you for coming. Uh, we appreciate uh, that partnership that you've had with you. It is true that we can actually build these a million jobs. What you've done when we met the, His Excellency the President on 19th of October 2022, we presented uh, a, a full value chain of all the 40 sectors, you know, sector by sector, and showed the opportunity that actually we can be able to move all the sectors by 3x, you know. And right now we're employing about manufacturing 338,000 jobs. If you multiply that by three, uh, that's a, a million plus. And we have demonstrated sector by sector that is possible. Look at leather, look at textile, look at automotive. Uh, we can build 1.4 million jobs in automotive, in, 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 in what we call a Venduvi, border border, yeah. uh, motorcycle. By just doing the local assembly, by making sure that we remove the duty uh, to complete knockdown kits to 0% and increase the duty of fully built motorcycle uh, to, to 35%, we will have local assemblies across the country. That will create more than a million jobs alone. Yes. All right. Now, a trend that we have seen with regards to the, uh, to the labor market in Kenya is the fact that most of the jobs that are being created are in the informal sector. How then do we integrate manufacturing and ensure that the, the jobs that are being created are formal and, are, well, are, are jobs that we can uh, uh, talk about even when we compare to other East African countries? I think the, the nomenclature, uh, formal, informal, it, it, it's not clear dichotomy. Uh, there are a lot of many companies, and perhaps uh, w there are many reasons why many companies don't want to turn to formal, but doesn't mean they are not getting jobs. Those informal we call informal jobs, uh, they create a lot of jobs. So I think the conversation is how do you bring all these companies into tax bracket, uh, and I think that's how now you formalize them. And there's opportunity as the companies grow, as the government provides more resources, if you go to those Juakali, you provide them with the services, then uh, they are able to formalize. Yes. Now, the other thing that comes to, uh, to, uh, to mind, of course, we've had a big conversation around the taxation regime. From a, manufacturing, a manufacturer's perspective, where are we and what more needs to be done to, make, to, to create a conducive business environment for manufacturers? So manufacturing, it's true. I mean, taxation in one single biggest challenge that businesses uh, face in Kenya, and not just manufacturing, but all the businesses. We have, you know, uh, finance bills that come every year. The taxation changes every year. But we have given a proposal, and we are happy that the government, working with the government, to come up with a national taxation policy. That when you invest today, you know for the next three years, you're going to that, 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 that regime is going to be stable. The challenge that we have today is that it changes every year. This year alone, excise duty has changed three times. Uh, so under that environment, you cannot build any stronger base. Manufacturing is a long-term game, and we have to make sure that it is stable, the environment is stable. All right. Now, of course, we've seen a lot of investors shying away from Kenya and moving to different areas. We've seen a lot of in uh, investments going towards uh, the Rwanda direction. What is happening in Rwanda that is making it so attractive than Kenya? I think it's just like um, a, you know, a, a good oil well machine. Rwanda is coordinated from a central point of view. If you go to Rwanda Development Board, you get all your things sorted out. 
we don't have a similar uh, infrastructure in Kenya. In Kenya, if you want to start a business, you'll go to 10 different, you know, or even more uh, different authorities. That overlap of mandates, that complexity of compliance, the cost of compliance is driving manufacturers away. If you go to Tanzania, which is next door, again, you get things at one-stop shop. That is really one-stop shop. Here is something that, that, that needs to be done. We appreciate the presence of the PS uh, uh, investment promotion today. And he said they are going to come up with something like that. But we hope uh, that actually we can copy from Rwanda Development Board. Uh, we can copy from Singapore, single point of, of, of contact. We can uh, copy from Tanzania. We can copy from Ethiopia. Kenya, if we are not careful, we are being left behind. And we need to put our act together. All right, and it's a good thing that you've mentioned that uh, the PS was here for the PS for investment. Now they, they're saying they, they're targeting at increasing the investments that are coming into the country to about 10 billion uh, investments worth 10 billion dollars. How much of this money would you uh, say that you're, you're also looking to tap into the manufacturing sector? I'll give you a simple example. Yeah. Look at cement sector. We had a conversation with the, with the PS uh, industry and PS investment, and one conversation was: Do we increase duty on clinker? Or do we allow other manufacturers to invest in their clinker? And across the loom, a room, all the manufacturers who are looking at building their own clinker capacity promised a, a, billion, a billion dollars right on the table. So we can actually, manufacturing can take half of this if you put our acts together. Right. Now, we can go, of course, without talking about the cost of energy. Now, we understand there has been a bit of hesitation from manufacturers going into EPZ because on one hand, government says that the cost of power has gone down, but yet when manufacturers and other investors want to take up uh, spaces in EPZ, they realize that the amount of money that they're going to pay for power, there's no difference. Maybe you can help us understand what is happening in that space. First of all, EPZs are full, so there's no place for, for you to invest in the EPZ. Now, Dongo Kundu needs to come up very quickly, Naivasha needs to come up very quickly, those are special economic zones, but I don't think there's any advantage of power. So power is expensive across the board, it affects everybody, it is making us uncompetitive. If you compare with Egypt, Egypt are paying an equivalent of about three shillings. Uh, you look at Ethiopia, they are paying equivalent of five shillings, uh, Tanzania eight shillings. Ourselves, we are paying 18, 20, 21 shillings. Yeah. We can compare. Arguments will come and say, oh, you know, the, the reliability of power in Ethiopia is not good, or Tanzania is load shedding. But it, we got to chew the gum and, and, and walk the stairs. We got to provide competitive power and reliable power, which is available and, 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 and good for production. All right, lastly, before I let you go, I can see uh, some of my colleagues getting ready. And so the other thing that I, I would really want to get uh, your thoughts on is the fact that a lot of consumers in the market are saying goods that are being manufactured in Kenya are slightly expensive than those being brought in. They are cheaper and they're of good quality. Not that our goods are not of good quality, but the biggest challenge has been the issue around cost. I think a cost is a, fact, is a function of many issues. Now, if power is expensive, Transport is expensive to move a container from Mombasa to, uh, to, to Nairobi. It's more expensive than bring a container from China to, to the port of Mombasa. Uh, the, all these regulatory uh, challenges, all the things that we need to do, inevitably the cost of, of production in Kenya is going to be high. Things are going to be more expensive. And again, you cannot compare with uh, other producing countries. They are doing enmas. India is produced for big domestic market. China is producing for big domestic market and also export market. But it is an egg and eat chicken situation. If we don't build our competitiveness, we will never be able to walk on our feet. We'll, you know, so it's a double whammy. All right, now my last, last question. I, know I said that was supposed to be the last one, but it's also the issue of the shilling, uh, the volatility of the, uh, of the Kenyan currency, and especially depreciating so much against the US dollar. What is the impact of this and what needs to be done to make sure that the cost of production goes down and for manufacturers who are importing some of their raw materials, they also do not incur that uh, FX uh, depreciation so huge? We have a big problem on Forex. Kenya imports almost 80% of the raw materials. Now, all of them are dollar dominated. Now, if we cannot get access to US dollars, today, if you go and you are looking for, to, beacons, to, to import a big consignment of raw materials, 100,000, 3 million dollars, you cannot get. You'll get in bits of 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 dollars. So this is a major problem. And again, what we get at the official CBK rate, and actually what you get from the bank, there's a big variance of almost seven, six dollars. Uh, that amounts to a, to a loss. 
you know so this is an area that we want the government to really really uh, focus on and provide uh, you know clarity on the actual cost of the dollar exchange rate and the official rates yeah. but it's a big problem all right, thank you so much, Anthony. And of course, we'll be holding your feet to the fire when it comes to the creation of those one million jobs. And of course, Nakunde, I will be giving you more details in our subsequent bulletins. But for now, back to you. All right, thank you, Jimmy, for that story. All right, now let's move on. Kenya Dryland Education Fund has intervened in Samburu and Marsabit by initiating an offtake program to cater for school fees and food to schools. The program targets to benefit 2,100.